particular spot this year is all the alligator grass that is growing in here. Each year there's a different type of floating vegetation. You can see the water hyacinth out there is floating and all this is floating alligator grass right here. And uh, you see a few patches of giant cut grass there which is attached and it's a remnant of the type of vegetation uh, that's attached but this all the rest of this is floating and uh, what we're going to do is have you walk out a little ways to show that although this is very green and looks like it's productive it's not it's all on the surface and what's underneath it is what is significant so um, we're trying to show that the original marsh mat which was very stable and didn't have all this open water didn't have any of this floating vegetation and was strong enough to walk on uh, has been compromised and now it's very weak it's turned into slush and open water and floating vegetation has colonized those areas. So what we're going to do now is have Kim walk out as far as she can, uh, which may not be very far, but it will show you uh, how soupy the bottom is and how weak the soil has become since they started discharging uh, from the Hammond sewage treatment plant into this area. He broke through you see you broke through all that you can see how deep it is marsh which is actually part of the same marsh that the, is across the highway where the discharge has affected the uh, that ecosystem here there is no receiving of the of the discharge from the Hammond sewage treatment plant but in this marsh the foundation is still very much intact it's a, it's over a thousand years old this is Panicum hematomen, which is freshwater marsh grass, and it is the best vegetation for holding a marsh together. It's root systems like bob wire, and uh, it's now about 30 centimeters tall, and it will get uh, this tall by the end of the summer, 
and lay over. Currently, the last year's panicum uh, was remained rooted throughout the winter and held the soil together and held the, the shoots. The shoots were still in place. And then as spring came, the new shoots grew up through the old panicum holding it in, in place. And uh, this is a bull tongue, which is also a rooted plant. It's a pretty good uh, plant for preserving the marsh, but this is actually much better. But this will, you can see plenty of bull tongue here now, but as the summer progresses, this freshwater maiden cane or marsh grass will dominate these uh, throughout the rest of the summer. And so that is what is the signature of a healthy marsh, these rooted vegetation that stays there. It holds the shoots and the roots in place throughout the winter and even as the uh, new shoots come up, it holds the old shoots in place. And right now we are, we have walked in this marsh at a time when the water is about two feet higher than normal or a foot and a half really about higher than it normally is. And we would like to come back later when the water drops and you can see actually how uh, there's very little water at all in this area. Even in high water, you can walk out here without much difficulty. And this is hot weather, so if you can do that in hot weather, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, there's no way you could walk this as far out into that the discharge marsh over there like we have walked out into this marsh so you don't see any floating vegetation out here it's all rooted there's not one species of vegetation that that takes place out here to any significant degree it's all maiden cane and bull tongue and predominantly maiden cane which is exactly what the marsh that is deteriorated or degraded across the way where the discharge goes. Uh, this, was, this is how it looked exactly before November 2006 when they turned on the discharge. That marsh over there was like this and it turned into something very different. It was altered because of that constant discharge. Now when we come back later and the, this area is drier, there will still be the same or relatively same amount of water in that other marsh because of the constant discharge. This is the signature of what people should be considering, not just because something is green, but it has to be green and rooted, and it has to be able to stay rooted during the rainy winter season to hold things together. Um, so I'm just trying to, to give an overview of the dynamics of what is really important to consider when evaluating the uh, health of a freshwater marsh. It is the type of plant that's growing there and it's the consistency of that plant over a long period of time. 